next. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, master class. It is an evidence-based medicine, a master class. I will be leading this and I will have a very wonderful so we'll master, master team with me. me. And, and they, they are, are going, going to present, present one by one, by one all, all the three, three aspects of optimal care, care to every child, child with type, type 1 diabetes. Let, Let me, me just set the context right here. And we will be in the next 45 minutes trying to do something which is take home and practical. So, so we, we have, have a lot of viewers virtually. The same masterclass will be available on the IDEC website later to watch. So for any clinician who is looking at treating type 1 diabetes in their clinics and is not a trained pediatric endocrinologist with a setup which is meant for type 1 diabetes, then there are a lot of challenges. And those are the challenges that we are going to try to look at in a very practical manner it is not our intention here to go into the entire theory and it is a huge, I mean, you'd need a conference just for that otherwise. So I start setting the context with optimal care to every child with type 1 diabetes. I have made every bold and capital because by every, we mean every. And we just heard Dr. Prasanna Kumar in this very hall and that was the dream that he was talking about. And that is what we are here to execute. And that is only possible when every person who is giving care to a child, adolescent, adult with type 1 diabetes has the same kind of vision on what they want for that person. Now, it's not that easy, right? This girl is Sanika. She is a type. She is a girl who had type 1 diabetes when she was 8 years old. And today she is a diabetes educator. But it's a long journey. It's an art and a science. We know the science, but we really have to get the grip on the art to become someone who can take care of type 1 diabetes. So it needs education. It needs motivation. It needs counseling, which will be talked about in our next sessions. It needs insulin techniques and regimes, which is something very practical without which it is not possible to get the kind of control we are talking about. We have the technology, the pumps and the CGMS and carb counting nutrition is a tool that we can use so effectively. So how do we approach this care is something that I want set in our minds that it has to be a team approach. We may be having a standalone clinic, the rest of the team can be created or reached out, it's a digital world today, or we can learn and uh, supply that aspect ourselves. But we do need educators, we need counselors, we need nutritionists. Oh, if we don't have an educator or with an educator, we can have a concept of a coach and of course the leaders with type 1 diabetes. So this is a spectrum which is not a doctor alone. I am an endocrinologist, I am a diabetologist, I will treat you, you are my patient with type 1 diabetes. It just doesn't work that way. It is a whole ecosystem, it is a community where they're not just equal partners, maybe they're the main partners of this partnership actually. Now these are the points which are usually missed and hence those are what I'm going to highlight and we are going to take them through the other three presentations and in questions and answers. But often what happens is we are meeting in two visits. The person with type 1 diabetes comes to us, gets very good care. You've counseled them, given them a lot of things, taught them everything and then you wait till they come again. What happens between these two visits is what determines how well they do. And maintaining this inter-visit communication channel is the most critical change, you know, game changer when it comes to care in type 1 diabetes. Because it needs a lot of hand-holding. So we can have helplines, we can have WhatsApp groups, we can have call a buddy kind of involvement with people with type 1 diabetes diabetes. There can be a lot of online ways of reaching them, maybe talk social media. Today, there's such beautiful type 1 social support groups. 
and you will have them connected, having competitions, sharing with each other, supporting each other. So these are things, if you have a person with type 1 diabetes, you might want to put them in connect with somebody in Chennai, somebody in Europe, somebody in, all through social media, and that's possible because that's inspiring. So maintaining an inter-visit communication channel is one of the key changing factors in our care system when we are trying to provide optimal care. Again, care has to be individualized. We cannot just say that, okay, person with diabetes, insulin, monitoring, food, done. It just doesn't happen. No one is alike. And we know that in all our medicine, no two patients are alike. But in type 1 diabetes, it's not just the medical side which is not alike. It is also their uh, financial status is not alike. The myths that surround in their society are not alike. The thought process, the whole family support system. And if a child is going to take insulin four to five times a day, is going to monitor four to five times a day, is going to think about food and plan it four to five times a day, it is going to need a lot of this ecosystem. So the individualization will be in terms of insulin, monitoring, physical activity, follow-up of investigations, emergency care, and medical nutrition therapy. All the crux comes to education. You can't do without education. So you give all these, but with a very, very strong foundation of education. What is the goal? The goal is a physically and psychologically and socially healthy citizen of the country. So they are like you and me. Why should we label them as anything else? But to get them really balanced physically as well as psychosocially is the goal. So often we think of physical and we leave out the psychosocial. Of course, psychosocial needs the support of the physical. So you do have the medical side, you have the psychosocial side, but here one cannot do without the other, and that is what we want to emphasize today. Another very quick factor that I'll be talking about, that a given for some is an aspiration for others. It may be something so, so naturally we may say that use a basal bolus regime or use the pump, use a CGMS, which is wonderful. And even if somebody can't afford it, it's our job, it's our duty to offer it to anyone. Everyone should know about it so that whenever they can get a source, whenever they can get funding, they would be aware, they will have an aspiration to go to. So we cannot deny them the awareness. But we have to know that there are people who cannot do so. And yet we have to give them optimal therapy. So a very quick look, when I say every, I mean every. There are patients who are daily wage worker parents. When are they going to give them insulin? How are they going to give them the lunch insulin that we are talking about? I'm giving you questions. My team is going to give you answers. Care workers who have low literacy, how do you give them education? So I al always say it's our job. We have to find a way how to give them education. It's okay if they are illiterate, but we have to innovate, improvise, and give them education. Can this little girl learn carb counting that we are talking about? Labeling. The language we use is so important. Child is useless. We can't say that. That's how they feel. There is fatigue, which can go all the way to depression. So all aspects have to be covered. It's a huge task. It's an art and a science, as I said. But I believe to every challenge, there's a solution. For example, this is Usha who lives in the Lonar town, which is the second largest crater in the world. And she lives, that's her actual home when we visited her, and she has no place to store her insulin, but that is the pot that she uses. This is an earthen pot, which is double layered with sand in between, and she is able to store her insulin. So there are so many solutions. No problem comes without a solution, and that is something we have to keep in mind. If we do not have Educators in our area, we do create coaches. These are some of the projects we did. We will talk about that later. Create groups. A friend is there. That's going to be big. I'm sure Dr. Dakshata is going to talk about that, and that is a major strength. Raise funds. We don't have money. It's okay. There are a lot of rich patients can donate for a lower, uh, less uh, available, uh, whoever has less resources. Or I have a big... Uh, poster, and this is one of my posters in my clinic, and Adan Peti, so many of my rich type 2 patients would support a child with type 1 diabetes. Create a safe and happy place. The whole world is out there to get them. When they walk into your clinic, let them feel good.
Let them feel protected. Let them feel happy. Let them feel understood. And that works in compliance to take the right insulin regimen to monitor. So if this base is right, that base is going to work. Because every dream needs to come true. So again and again, I'm emphasizing every, irrespective of where, what, how the child comes from, that dream needs to come true. So it's easier said than done. There's so much to do. There's so many calculations, so many aspects that many people don't even take one step forward because it's like daunting that how are we going to do all this? But once you start doing, you get there and we learn as we do. So with this, I would end my presentation and invite my first team member,